Welcome back to our second video series. Uh, this one is going to be a Picatinny railed gas block that I designed and patented back in 2007, I believe. Uh, so this is going to be a bit of an interesting uh, series because we get to start off with a finished part and then work backwards, so to speak, or rather start over and work from scratch. This part um, was made by a machine shop that I found and this is the third or fourth iteration um, I had gone back and made changes and stuff after I used the other ones and decided they needed to be changed um, so this is it this is the one that I've been using for the past few years I've run it hard in numerous uh, rifle courses and and things like that uh, there's a picture of one of my rifles and uh, it's been absolutely fantastic I absolutely love this thing so that's this idea is pretty much what uh, prompted me to purchase a CNC machine to make it because I couldn't find any machine shop that was willing to make it for a reasonable price there's a picture of me a couple of years ago using it in a carving course after much deliberation, I decided that the best way to go about this is to uh, have some stock blanks of a known dimension. So I um, cut these blocks and faced them to uh, pretty close tolerances uh, a couple of years ago. And now I'm finally getting the machine on. So the first thing we're doing here is uh, spot drilling for the main bore hole and for the gas tube hole. So this will be ultimately the back of the gas block. And um, it'll become more apparent at the end of this video while we're starting uh, here. But basically I made a fixture plate a couple of years ago and this was the best way I could think of to, uh, to fixture it. But so what you're seeing here is a 14 millimeter drill. Um, I had a lot of problems with this with the old motor. I could barely drill that hole with the old motor and that was with the drill spinning about twice as fast as it is, as it is now. And it had a peck depth of about half of what it is now. And it would still bog down. Um, I was able to get through the whole block uh, with the old motor that way just barely but by the time it was getting to the end that motor was just uh, really bogging down even though it didn't stall um, I did stall it many times before I finally got to that those parameters but here these are the parameters basically suggested by G-Wizard the uh, G-Wizard calculator great piece of software um, now that I have a motor that, <laughs> that works correctly uh, it's very easy to just dial in your uh, cutting parameters and it spits out your feeds and speeds and it's just fantastic. Uh, anyway, no sign of the motor bogging down. Uh, it sounds great. Uh, the load is not really significantly changing. Uh, you can see the percentage there of the, um, the average load. Then you look at the instant load meter and it's going up a bit when it's in the cut, but not very much. So I'm very happy with that. In fact, I could probably speed up this cut a little bit or be a little bit more aggressive with it, but I think it's just fine for now. So my process here is I have two blocks in there. I'm going to start off with two blocks just to test out um, this, this method. If it all works like I think it's going to, I'm going to, have, I'm going to be doing six blocks at a time across the vise. Um, so I'll be doing this operation on six blocks at a time. And this is drilling a 14 millimeter bore straight through the block, and then um, in a minute it'll switch and drill the gas tube hole.
Okay, here we are to the gas tube hole. I started off using a normal drill bit, but uh, it kept getting clogged with chips, even though I had a really tight peck distance there. It kept getting clogged, and, and the old motor would bog down, and then the drill bit would break off inside the block, which was a pain in my ass. So someone suggested trying a parabolic drill, and that's what this is. And it definitely works much better. It clears those chips out easily, but uh, and I was able to use it a few times with the old motor, even though it would start to bog down. It never, uh, I think I actually did break one, but I, I could generally be confident that it would make it through a uh, cut without breaking. <laughs> but here, no problem at all. You can see it clears the chips, there's no bogging down. I mean, I'm just thrilled. So after we have our 14 millimeter hole drilled through the block, I flip them over and we're now machining from the other side and you can see that it wasn't clamping that block tight enough. So that was a kind of a screw up on my part. It's not going to hurt anything because the whole top of this block is ultimately going to be machined away. Um, so I put a little C-clamp on there to hold them together and that worked okay. Um, so here I'm just taking a two and a half inch long roughing end mill and roughing the bore out to um, close to the final dimension. And I'm doing it this way because I want a, a ledge. So remember there's a 14 millimeter hole and I'm opening the bore up to about uh, 0.75 inches here or close to that. So there's going to be, and I'm only going down two inches and this block is two and a quarter inches tall. I'm sorry, I'm going down two and a quarter inches. This block is two and a half inches tall. So there's going to be a quarter inch lip at the bottom, or a quarter inch ledge. And you'll see why that's there in a minute. But uh, this, this cut went okay. It sounded, I mean, everything on the machine sounded fine, but the actual cut sounded a little bit rough, like like the end of the like the end mill or something was dull which I think it is it had a few little chips in it from using it with my old motor so I might just replace that one or I might get you know an indexable end mill or something I haven't decided yet but this is working for right now I'm just trying to basically get down a proof of concept here so I have a bunch of these blocks machined up from uh, a couple of years ago and, um, and this is sort of what I had in mind doing, was uh, machining a bunch of blocks to a known dimension and then, uh, and then doing these operations to where I can actually put them on the fixture plate. And of course, yeah, there's a rough surface finish just because it's a corn cob roughing end mill, but here we are with a finishing end mill of the same size, two and a half inches long, uh, fork loop. This is a finishing in a uh, half inch diameter. So this is basically a finishing pass. And uh, it leaves a really nice finish. It, the camera makes it look kind of funny, like it's rough or something, but it's actually extremely smooth. And it's very round. And I experimented with uh, playing with uh, a Criterion boring head before, and I just could never get a nice surface finish. It always looked like a fine pitch screw or a, you know a fine pitch thread going down the borehole and I just wasn't happy with it and I got a lot of chatter and broke a whole bunch of inserts and that may, had a, that may have had a lot to do with the fact that my machine was out of tram back then. Um, it is now in tram to less than five uh, tenths over six inches in both directions so it's about as good as you can get um, I had to shim it, shim the column head and everything and also shim the spindle uh, the spindle cartridge <clears throat> but this actually leaves a very nice finish and I think I'm just gonna stick with this for now until I find a better method of maybe a faster smoother method of getting a, a nice finished bore yeah, it looks kind of rough, but it's actually not. It's very smooth.
and it's a very nice uh, tolerance. So here's why I did it this way. So I made that fixture plate there that has two bosses. One is a 14 millimeter boss and the other one is a, a 0 0.180 inch boss to go in the gas tube hole. And I threaded the, the large boss so I can stick those on a fixture plate like so and then drop some uh, socket head cap screws down in there and very rigidly hold it to the plate because the next operations put a lot of uh, lateral force on the part. So I want it to hold it very rigidly and I and I made this fixture plate the, what, the way I did because I want to be able to get it from the top side as, as it's sitting now and I also wanted to get it from uh, the other two sides and I'll kind of just show that in a second and I didn't quite get that middle one tightened down enough and you'll notice it flexes a little bit when I start squeezing on it and stuff the other two are very rigid it's almost like a solid piece of steel that middle one is just uh, it just needed to be tightened a little bit more there's some other ones that are in various stages of experimentation but I wanted to machine it from that side and then I wanted to flip it around the back way and then flip it that side and clamp it in the vise to be able to machine the, the top portions of the rail because those those operations won't uh, impart that much force onto the part because they're going to be with much smaller diameter end mills and things and drills and whatnot. So, so far so good. So uh, stay tuned for the next video which is probably going to be machining those two uh, blocks on the left while it's in the fixture plate. And I have decided if I'm going to go ahead and machine that third one. I think I might wait just because it's a different. Everything is different about that. I also wanted to welcome all the new subscribers. Thank you for joining. Please like and continue to share my videos. Anyone who is not a subscriber, please subscribe to my channel. Also, you can read more about this gas block and other projects on my new website at www.warmachinellc.com. One word. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video.